Hello learners, I am Dr. Arsana Adhikari, going to discuss an important topic from your paper, second paper and the first unit that is educational measurement. So in the first semester, you have come across different important topics of education. So here in this paper, we will discuss about the most important aspect of teaching, learning and education that is measurement. So what we learn and we teach, but in the process of teaching and learning, the outcome we have to evaluate. We have to know what, what is the outcome of our input. So we have to evaluate ourselves and evaluate our student. But to evaluate, we need to measure. So measurement is an important topic of teaching, learning as well as education. So before going to discuss about evaluation, we must have a complete idea or clear conception about measurement. So in this unit, we will discuss about the meaning of measurement, types of measurement, difference between physical and mental measurement, educational measurement, what are the nature of educational measurement and the important functions of educational measurement. So let's start. So first of all, we have to discuss about the concept of measurement. So we all use this term measurement in our day-to-day -day life. And we also use this term in our day-to-day -day life. Because since morning to night, we are accused to some activities like cooking, bathing, and all other activities which involve some measurement. Suppose when a baby is born, his weight is measured, that it is 3 kg or more or less than that. When we cook, we measure the amount of the rice or the dal. So in our day-to-day -day activity life, we come across so many activities which requires measurement. So measurement is a part and parcel of our life. But what is it? In actual meaning, it is the act or process of ascertaining the size, dimension, amount, degree and quantity of something. So in simple word, we can say that measurement is an act of quantification. Means we give some quant quantitative value to a subject, to a object or to a person. To the, to the process of measurement and in terms of the, the dimension like size, uh, degree and like when we uh, measure a table, when we measure a breadth of a house, we give some, we give some unit like the, uh, the meter or centimeter or when we measure our weight, we give some uh, dimensions or unit like uh, five feet or six feet like that. So measurement is an act of giving value which is quantitative in nature. Then there are lots of definition regarding measurement but an important definition was given by eminent educationist Guilford. He said measurement means the description of data in terms of number. And this in turn means taking advantages of the many benefit that operates with numbers and mathematical thinking profile. So simply we can say that Guilford definition implies measurement as a description of data in terms of number. So when we describe some data, it may be a person data, it may be an object data, in terms of number, it becomes a measurement. Then measurement aims at finding out the quantity of some commodity or characteristics in some definite unit. As I have already told you that when we measure something, we give some unit in terms of liter, kilometer, centimeter, kg, like that. So measurement aims to finding out quantity of some commodity or characteristics. So this is about the concept of measurement. 
then we have to know about the types of measurement because in the field of education and psychology we we have to discuss measurement in broad term we cannot define or confine only to a particular measurement because in in our education or in psychology we have come across or you will come across lots of mental traits mental activities so so we have to know before that we have to know what are the types of measurement so basically the uh, measurement is classified into two types first one is physical measurement and second one is psychological measurement which is also termed as mental measurement so let us first discuss about the physical measurement so physical measurement is that measurement that exists in the physical or material world is uh, uh, like a like the table like the uh, room like the building so whenever we measure the physical object or a particular object of the material world it is known as physical measurement and the most important characteristics or or the fact of physical measurement is that it start with a zero point so what it means when we measure a table or a particular pencil or a pen we start from the zero point so when it is a, when we uh, when we term it as a four feet or two feet it means that it is four feet or two feet above the zero level so we, we all have to remind this that physical measurement always start with a zero point and it is always direct and objective next we have to discuss about the one of the most important measurement that we have to or you have to apply in your daily life and that is psychological measurement so in the first semester you have come across different terms like personality intelligence creativity interest etc so these are some mental traits or mental phenomenon of an individual so when measurement exists in the psychological and mental world and the characteristics that is known as psychological measurement that means when we measure the psychological aspect of a particular person like we measure the intelligence aptitude attitude uh, or personality or creativity that will be termed as psychological measurement in this particular paper you will have lots of testing or like uh, aptitude test interest test creativity test all these tests will will be there and you have to study but before that we you have to know you have to be clear about the term psychological measurement and it is it simply means the measuring or quantifying the mental or psychological aspect of a particular person or, or a group of people then this measurement is generally quant qualitative though we do it measures in terms of quantity but psychological measurement is generally qualitative in nature and it is indirect and infinite because we cannot directly measure an intelligence of a particular person we have to we have to measure the intelligence or 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 you can say personality in in terms of some other aspect of the person so psychological measurement is always indirect and indefinite so these are the two important types of measurement then to be more clear we have to discuss about the difference between physical and psychological measurement the difference will help us and you to be clear more with the term both the terms so uh, as we have already discussed that physical measurement is uh, direct so it is more accurate than mental measurement we can directly accurately measure the weight or height of a person but we cannot directly measure the intelligence or interest or aptitude or attitude or something else directly of a particular person we have to die we have to measure the particular as mental aspect 
in terms or or in condition of some other mental characteristics then physical measurement is objective yes whereas we can directly measure and accurately measure it that is it is objective but mental measurement is subjective suppose we have to remark someone we have to uh, give some value to a particular person that he is good or bad or better so it may include some subjective judgment if that particular person is my friend or my relative then i can relate i can rate him as best but in physical measurement what is the, we we have to give the accurate and exact measurement that we measure okay then the next uh, important difference between these two is that the physical measurement is direct and mental measurement is indirect i have already mentioned about this and the last not the least in physical measurement unit can be referred to a zero point yes i have already mentioned in the uh, first part that physical measurement start with a zero point but there is no zero point in mental measurement so when a particular person or student gain zero marks or zero zero in a in an intelligence test it doesn't mean that the particular person or student do not the doesn't have intelligence he had but the accurate accurate measurement we cannot gain because it is not direct and absolute so these are the differences between physical and psychological or we can say mental measurement now another important the topic of this particular unit is educational measurement as you all are students of education so you all must be clear and must know the concept or the term educational measurement so as we all know that education is an act or process through which the behavior of a particular person or a particular group of students is modified so basically education concentrate on modifying or rectifying the behavior raw behavior of a particular person through different experiences and teaching learning processes so when we have to define or we, when we have to discuss about the educational measurement we can term it as a process of quantifying the influence of effectiveness of learning experience in terms of modification of student behavior so whenever we teach in the classroom or in to a teaching learning process what we expect we expect that our children our student learn something so through the learning process what be what modification they acquire that is measured in terms of educational measurement so so after the teaching learning process or after a particular duration of uh, teaching annual test or summative test are conducted and through this what we find we get the output that how much what amount of learning what amount of learning experiences the students have acquired and when we measure this amount of learning experience or learning output it is termed as educational measurement so we can say that in order to ascertain the senses in student behavior their knowledge skill abilities are assigned with some number on the basis of some set rule so in the uh, next uh, chapters or unit you will come come across the concept of test standardization so we have to apply we have to conduct administer some test and through the test we are able to measure the students behavior in terms of in terms of their changes what changes they have acquired in we we can we can measure in the process or in the terms of educational measurement so we can say that educational measurement is the measurement of behavioral change in the field of education because behavioral change is the important or the primary 
purpose of education therefore educational measurement aims at or aims to measure the behavioral change in the student then uh, it can be also understood as a part of psychological measurement because in the field of education or in education we we can measure the interest aptitude intelligence of the student so as all these are the mental traits or mental characteristics or the psychological characteristics therefore this educational measurement can be understood as a part of psychological measurement so this so this is the concept of educational measurement now let's discuss some nature of educational measurement which will help you to be more clear about the concept so first of all it refers to the quantitative presentation of different aspect of individual behavior yes uh, we have already mentioned that uh, as measurement is the quantification process so educational measurement refers to the quantitative representation what behavioral changes or what behavioral characteristics we found in the classroom or in a school it is it is represented in terms of quantity in in the educational measurement or by educational measurement then it is a process of assigning numbers or symbol to individual suppose when we measure a particular student then we assign some number suppose this particular student one have scored 80 then some particular students have gained more than that 95 we assign them some numbers or some grades like a b b plus a plus so all these are what all these are quantification we assign we assign some number to their activity so when we assign some number or some value to, to a student's uh, activity or students behavioral changes it is the process of educational measurement but we have to do it according to some set rule so set rule means we have to do it by conduction and administration of some test by standardization or through applying different norms so all this will be discussed in the next paper of, the, of this paper in the next unit then it refers to the process of testing, scaling, appraising the outcome of learning. Of course, as it is a, a process of assigning numbers, but so to assign some number, we have to uh, we have to adapt the testing. So we have to conduct the testing. We have to test them. We have to scale them, and we have to appraise them, and in terms of their learning outcome then uh, it is indirect and is based on reference so when a particular student obtain 50 marks and another students obtain 25 or 100 mark we cannot say that that particular b students have obtained twice or double of this a who have obtained 50 because this uh, educational measurement which is a part of psychological measurement is what is indefinite and indirect we cannot directly measure the particular uh, particular characteristics of the particular student we we can measure him in terms of in terms of references so this educational measurement is based on reference then it doesn't start from a true zero point so as it is a kind of uh, mental measurement so it is now start with a true zero point so these are the some uh, characteristics or nature of educational measurement hope you have understood about this concept with the help of these characteristics now let's discuss the most important uh, concept or aspect of this particular discussion that is function of educational measurement so why we have to measure why we have to apply the concept of measurement in the field of education and psychology so the first function or the or we can say it as an aim purpose is instructional function so when we measure we are able to know or we gain we gain the concept of learning amount 
who is learning and who is lacking behind so to instruct properly so to teach properly in the classroom we have to measure our student otherwise our teaching our teaching learning process will be fruitless to make our teaching learning process effective meaningful we have to measure because measurement gives us the output of the learner how much they have learned or is there any difficulty in understanding any point or any any topic on the part of the learner so to instruct properly to make proper instructional planning uh, efficient planning we have to major then selection yes we have to select our student because in a particular uh, institution we, we have seen that lots of student apply but few only after selection they are selected and they are able to take admission so the, how how this is done this is done on the basis of measurement their their uh, capabilities abilities are measured and on the basis of their uh, abilities the institution or the particular teacher select the particular student then classification yes we we know that in a particular classroom or school there are lots of students with variety of abilities and interest but to help them to develop their inner capabilities fully we have to identify them we have to classify them that that these are the person student who are the best or who can do the best these are the particular person or student who lack some ability so they need some they need extra care extra support so we have to classify our student so we can do it on the basis of measurement then comparison we have to compare between and among the student this comparison is healthy be healthy because this will help them to boost your knowledge boost your skill so comparison is also based down on the basis of testing scaling which are the part of educational measurement then prediction yes so we all can say that through the activity through the behavior we can predict or we can say that which learner or which student is going to be the best or which learner is going to uh, excel in the in future so this can also be done on the basis of measurement then diagnosis of course when the students are uh, uh, they face some problem learning difficulty it is the duty of the teacher to identify the difficulty and to diagnose them and this can also be done through testing or we can say with the help of educational measurement then guidance a teacher is not only a teacher he is a guide he is a counselor so to guide and counsel the particular student to select to choose right path in a right direction at the right time we have to know their ability and this ability and mental status so for this also we have to test our student and on the basis of the testing we can give them proper guidance and advices then of course for administration not only for the teacher but also for the administration who run the school or a particular institution this measurement is very important on the basis of the on the basis of learning outcome in a, in a, in terms of quantity uh, unit the administration can can take decision like sending them to some uh, higher educational institution of uh, national or international level then lots of thing can be done or the administration can make make plan in a better way to get some fruits from the students so this can also be done on the basis of the measurement then research yes we have to we can do research whenever some on the basis of the learning outcome or measurement we can do some research why it is happening or what why it is not happening or what can be done to make it more effective
so dishes can be done so overall last but not the least for development developmental characteristics or development is the last function of educational measurement so on the basis of the learning outcome the result we can we can make planning for future development and help our students to learn in a better way and to excel in all the activities of their educational function so these are the function that the, that the educational major men perform or they serve so uh, as a whole we have come to the last part of this discussion so basically we have discussed about the concept of measurement which is actually the act of act or process of ascertaining the size dimension amount degree and quantity of something then measurement is of two types physical and mental or psychological measurement and the main difference between these two is that physical measurement is objective and mental measurement is subjective then the process of quantifying the influence of effectiveness of learning experience in terms of modification of student behavior is termed as educational measurement then this the uh, uh, functions of this measurement are selection, classification, comparison, and so on. So I hope you have understood the concept of measurement, types of measurement, educational measurement, and its various nature and function. So this, uh, this is for today's discussion. In, in the next uh, part of this paper, we will discuss about the scales of taste or measurement. So till then, thank you. Thank you.